Hey people. So we're coming to you from Kingston, Jamaica. We got here. Wagwan. <laughs> Wagwan. We got here um, Saturday. Saturday. And we just wanted to come on and talk a little bit about our experience coming in and traveling. I know lots of folks are restless, wanting to get out and about and travel. So we started off in New Orleans and you want to talk about what happened next? Uh, New Orleans to Miami and Miami to Montego Bay. When we arrived in Jamaica, I think there was a little bit of a backlog because three planes landed at the same time. But as you exited the plane, they had everyone lined up. You had medical personnel in masks and face, uh, shields, face shields, full PPE, <laughs> taking temperatures, escorting people to the bathroom as they knew it may be a little bit of a wait. So they were pulling people out of line, which was very thoughtful. But as you kind of moved through the line and they were taking your temperature, you kind of started to see the assessment process of what was happening. Uh, by the time we got to the first kind of checkpoint, hand sanitizer, and the first part of the screening process, you were escorted to a table where they took your information, which your information was already in the system because you had to fill out a form to get authorization to come into the country. Three um, days in advance yeah, of travel. Yeah, three days in advance of travel. Which somebody forgot to do. Yeah, she forgot to do it. And we almost got left We ain't gonna talk about that. that. That was her, that was her, right? Mm. So after that, they pulled up your information in the system, verified all of your information, kind of did a, uh, a, a reiteration of what was on the document, kind of let you know what the procedures were in terms of quarantining, when entering in the country. So then they informed us, or asked us basically, informed us, do you understand you will be getting a corona test today before <laughs> you leave the airport? Right. So we left that space, finally got to immigration. Um, so we gave our immigration documents and then moved on to customs. Meanwhile, every five to 10 feet, someone is spraying you with hand sanitizer. White room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the chair we had to sit down in the registration um, space was wrapped in plastic. And when I, before I sat down, someone rushed in, sprayed it down with some sort of sanitizing spray, sprayed the table, the woman who was taking our registration information changed her um, gloves. All of them had on N95 masks, um, white face shields, white down. Um, you need to get your curry chicken. Go okay. get your chicken. Um, white down the surface area. And so this was happening at every step of the process. So after that, we go through immigration. After immigration, we head in to get our bags. Um, before entering the baggage area, we are sprayed again. Um, we get the bags. Before we go through the customs now, to clear customs, same procedures. Meanwhile, we have had a mask on continuously. Continuously, everybody has masks. Every person deboarding the plane has a mask. Everyone we are interacting with, um, at the very least has a mask, but most of them have full PPE, including face shields. Um, so after we finally clear customs, um, then we were directed to put our bags into a holding area and given a card. From there, we were escorted to take, um, to check in and verify our identity again. Um, and then we were given the Corona test. Um, so the one thing I forgot was the one, the, I'm going to start all over again. No, 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 before, no. Before we got, before we got to the bags though, they, after we left immigration and they verified our information, identifies our test kits, then they sent us to an area where you had to download the app. So there was an entire app that we had to download with a message from the prime minister and she's going to tell you about the app because she loves the app. But this app um, is where you see a dashboard of all the cases in Jamaica, um, parish by parish, how yeah. many people were sick, how many people died, active cases, recovery cases. 
And this is also where you check in on a daily basis while here. So they're tracking you, but also collecting data so that they know what's going on. But not only that they know what's going on, you know what's going on. So that was very, very impressive to get that app. So once we got that app, got our bags, went through customs, then we had to go through another checkpoint. So I think right now we're at six. Off the plane temperature, first checkpoint into the screening area, then the next checkpoint into immigration, after immigration into baggage claim, after baggage claim into the app, after the app to actually get the bags, and then after the bags to go through immigration. So yeah, we're about six or seven, right? So then we enter into this next line, we go outside, they take our bags, store them, and then we had to go to this other line where we had now downloaded the app, we had been sanitized about six times, and we were given these documents to show that we had gone through these procedures and that all of the paperwork matched from when we signed up online to what we confirmed to we, when we were on the ground. For that information being matched up with test kits for each of us for two corona tests, one nasal and one mouth swab. So then now we finally, after all of that, then we get to the doctors who are on the outside of the airport who then take- A tent, a, a tent on the outside of the a airport. A nasal swab and then a oral swab. And then, only then were we then given additional paperwork that we can then come back to get our bags to then leave the airport. Now tell her what happens after you leave the airport when I go check on my curry chicken that I'm cooking. So after that, I mean, it's been amazing. So we actually flew into Montego Bay, even though we're staying in Kingston. And so someone had to come pick us up which meant we had to travel. Um, and as soon as I left the parish where the um, airport is in Montego Bay, as soon as I left the parish, the phone went off and was like, where are you going? You need to check in with us. You're traveling, you're moving. So it was clear that um, the geo tracking system works. But beyond that, what I've also seen um, is everyone here is wearing a mask. Everyone, even the man at the corner with the squeegee guy at the corner trying to squeegee the windshield has a mask. Everyone has a mask. Um, if you've ever been here to Kingston, you know sometimes you have to go past a guard to go into a parking lot for a store. Those guards have on masks. You have to pull up. Usually they give you a ticket so that you can enter and then you have to use that ticket to leave. They have... Um, Thermometers, they take temperature checks to get into the parking lot for the store. When you get to the store, there's guards on the outside sanitizing you before you can enter a store, making sure you have on a mask, opening the door so you don't have to touch the door handle. Um, and this has been our consistent experience, which is just night and day. Um, and something we really wanted to come on and share, as we know, a lot of folks are contemplating traveling and is it safe? I will tell you the most unsafe part of our journey here was while we were in the United States. I have never felt safer about a situation. Um, I know folks might have concerns around privacy, et cetera, and data and all of that. But if that meant that a hundred and almost 150,000 people in the United States didn't have to die. I think I give up some privacy for a little while um, to ensure that uh, folks will live through this pandemic. The other thing I really wanna say about this is this is arrogance. This is arrogance. When I am, the packet of information that we receive from the Jamaican government, you can look on it and see a lot of it is World Health Organizational information that they white labeled for Jamaica. Right, they put, you know, black people on it. They made it, you know, adapted it for a Jamaican audience. But the back of it shows it came. The information came from the World Health Organization. So just like Jamaica took the test from the World Health Organization, they also took materials. They took guidelines. They put took protocols and put those things in place. And that's exactly why you see them having 10 deaths. And so what's ironic to me is we talk about Jamaica as a third world country. 
when first world America is on track to seeing hundreds of thousands of Americans dying from arrogance, from arrogance. So let me, let me put that into perspective for you. Um, I was born in Jamaica. I grew up in the US and in about 2007, I came back to the Caribbean to work in several islands. The first island I worked in was St. Kitts and Nevis, population 40,000 people. That means the entire island in St. Kiff and Nevis would be dead twice over, three times over, based on the count in the US. Barbados, I've lived there for two and a half years as well. That country has about 350,000. That means half the population of Barbados would be dead right now based on the numbers in the US. Um, St. Lucia has, I think either 75 or 150,000 all of St. Lucia would be dead. So we're talking about entire countries. Worth the people. Worth the people have died in the US. We have not seen this. So prior to coming to Jamaica, we had to take our kids down to Florida to their grandmother. So we live in New Orleans and we're traveling. So as we traveled through Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and we had to stop, I thought I was in a twilight zone because it was like nothing had ever happened. No one were wearing masks, people were out. Everyone was just like, okay, great, you know? And so it's very sobering to come home and I'm very proud to kind of see how our government, the Jamaican government is handling this. And as Takima said, you know, Nothing about their response has been, quote unquote, third world or developing nation. It's been a first world effort. And if we had even half the intentionality of what they had, I mean, think about what happened when our American citizens were coming back to the US and just stuck in the airport. Nothing was done to kind of see where they were at, how to screen them, how to properly figure out where they're going and if they were infected. It's just a shame. It's just a shame. So anyway, we wanted, we recorded this because we want a lot, we want um, this to be shared, um, especially amongst black folks. Don't let folks tell you that our countries are inferior. We are the most intelligent people. Um, and this is an example of putting black intelligence to work to make sure black people live and thrive. So, um, just want to share this. Please share this, especially those of you who are considering travel. Um, I recommend you find out if if you want to um, travel, if they have things like this in place. I feel a thousand times safer being here. Um, in many ways, I'm counting the days so my children are, you know, join us here um, because we are so much more safe here than we ever were back in the States. So anyway, I hope this helps y'all. Leah Thayer.